Good morning, fam. Welcome back to Erica ZDC. And today we are doing Steel Talk. You guys are going to love this video. We are talking today about my favorite non stainless steel and my favorite stainless steel. The current favorites, okay? Because I have a, a prediction here that with the influx of custom work I have coming in for the channel, this is probably going to change within the next few months. So I just wanted to document what my top favorites are right now. That way, once we test all of those other ones that are coming in, we can kind of go back to this video and have some comparison points, okay? This is gonna be a really fun video. Um, it's gonna just be a lot of talking and steel discussion. So you can turn it on while you take a shower, drink your coffee. Uh, send me your mother's number. We're not going to be looking at a ton of knives, so it's really just something you can listen to, almost like a podcast, okay? Also, uh, disclaimer, per usual, these are my opinions from my testing and my experiences. There are going to be people down in the comments that will be keyboard warriors raging that I have a different opinion than them, and um, all I can say is these are um, experiences based off of testing that I have rigorously done in my own time okay so let's get into it i love a lot of knives i love a lot of old school stuff and i lot of, i love a lot of new school stuff okay i grew up with a very old-fashioned father who only would carry fixed blade knives or lockbacks he actually made knives and he carried something very similar to a buck 110, but way slimmer and thinner in the pocket. And that was the only folding knife that he ever carried. Otherwise it was only fixed blades. Very old fashioned dude. Also was in the mindset of like wanting ease of sharpening and toughness at the forefront of the mind. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to growing up with fathers or grandfathers like that, okay? They wanted to be able to like strop their knife back on a, a crusty piece of leather in the workshop or something, or their belt, okay? Um, so I really have a soft spot in my heart for old school knives. You guys know I love my traditionals. I carry one every single day. I carry a Sodbuster Jr. every single day. <clears throat> I love them. I think that it's a really cool little reminder of how far we've come. And for doing simple tasks like cutting your lunch and apples and, you know, little tiny things here and there, they do great. And sometimes sometimes that's all you need, right? Sometimes if you're not doing too much, that's all you need. <clears throat> so I love old school knives, old steels, um, A2, 01, 1095, stuff like that. Um, those are almost like hobbyist novelty steels for me. They're just fun to use and carry. Uh, if I do not have performance at the forefront of my mind, they're just fun. I love them. I love using this particular knife as a sharpened pry bar. I put up a video yesterday of me prying apart frozen beef bones for my dogs with this. And um, it's still, it still cuts paper cleanly. Um, it's a nice little sharpened pry bar. Like I love doing fun tasks like that. Again, if using a knife as a cutting tool and the best cutting tool can be is not at the forefront of my mind, okay? <clears throat> I I have a time and place for these old school little knives. They're, they're a blast for me to, to own. However, with the times changing, me growing as a person, getting more integrated into the performance custom genre of the knife community, I've learned a lot about custom heat treat, higher hardness, blade geometry. I'm really learning a lot about that lately. And through my journey, um, I've grown a, a mass appreciation for thin, hard knives. I like your mom to be thick. I like a thick booty on a girl. However, with knives, thin and hard, mm, that hits the spot for me. That hits the spot for me. So with that being said, uh, with all of the testing I've done, all of the blue collar jobs that I have tested these knives on, some of my favorite steels are K390 and Rex 45, and I will explain why I'm kind of grouping them together, and Magnacut 
and S45VN. Now, <clears throat> I have tested all of the knives that I'm going to show. They all have full reviews on the channel and I tested and carried them for a month. Um, let's talk about S45VN first. So the reason I have S45 in this lineup is because in my opinion, it's at least at this time period, easier to get a well done high performance S45VN compared to a high performance Magna Cut in the realm of production knives, okay? And the reason being is because when Magna Cut was or originally released, the data from Laren Thomas said that it would perform best across the board with edge retention and toughness at, I believe it was 60 to 62, okay? Now, very quickly, we learned that wasn't exactly the case, okay? So companies like Hogue, for example, followed the data, and unfortunately, customers' feedback was that the edge retention was not quite there, okay? So Hogue listened to the data, made the first um, release of Hogue Decas at that hardness, and they were not cutting for as long as customers wanted. So they actually ended up going back, revisiting it, and re-releasing the DECA at a higher HRC. Because unfortunately, the customer's experiences contradicted the data that was released by the man himself that made the steel. Okay? Um, and that has happened with numerous makers and companies. Uh, we are still in that transition period. So you can still very much find production knives in MagnaCut being released at 60 to 62 HRC. And I don't recommend investing your money in that because you can get a knife at 62.5, 63, 64, and you are not sacrificing toughness. I, I need to really drive that home to you guys. MagnaCut done correctly at 62.5 to 64 is not compromising toughness, and I am telling you that from experience, okay? I don't care what the paperwork says. I don't care what Laren says. I don't. And custom makers working with MagnaCut, please put your experiences down below, okay? Please. I want to hear what you're saying working with the steel hands-on, because I know for a fact that there are makers that are clocking it in at 62.5 to 64, and through our testing, we are not finding a compromise in toughness, so there's no reason to aim low. Do the best you can do and put it higher, okay? But, like I said, a lot of companies have not made that transition, or maybe they don't even want to, to bringing it up to a higher hardness, because it takes more time, more effort, more money, more belts, okay? Magna Cut's a bitch to grind, I know that. Especially at a higher hardness, I know that. I, I get it. And you're blowing through three times the the um, belts that you are other steels, okay? Uh, a production company that I do know of that's running Magna Cut higher. The dogs are going to start having the zoomies. Um, is Spyderco. Spyderco aimed high. They released... Hey, hey! They released the Native 5 in Magna Cut at a higher hardness. Nobody's having issues. It's great, okay? Um, Chris Reeve, same thing. They got rid of S45 real quick. They brought in Magna Cut. They aimed at, as high as they could, and it actually is a decent performer. I think they're doing 63. Um, but if, if you don't want a Spider Co. and you're looking for a good everyday carry knife, S45VN is a great option. Spider Co. actually does really good S45VN. I love theirs. I did a test when I was working on the farm. I took in three knives. I took in a Para 3 in S45. I took in a Bug Out in S30V. And I brought in a Spartan Harsey Folder 3.25 inch in S45VN double cryoed. We had... Um, oh. Hey, hey, Zadie, knock it off. We had garlic brought in from the fields and it comes in in the entire stem. Come here, baby. Sorry, she's on one today. Um, 
the garlic gets brought in from the field. It is the entire garlic root and stem and everything. And it comes in covered in soil and rocks. And we have to trim that garlic, okay? So you, you cut off the top, you trim the bottom roots, and you put it, put it in a bunch for people to buy. It's a very abrasive, destructive test for a knife. It, it is. Um, when I did that test, which I believe part of that or all of it is recorded on the usership playlist. Um, the S45VN from Spyderco did, I believe, 15 heads of garlic. The bug out in S30V did, I believe, 10. And this was, um, like how many heads of garlic it, it could do before, like, completely shitting the bed. The Spartan Harzy folder in double cryoed S45VN did, I believe, seven heads, but I remember it really crapping out at five and I pushed it too far to seven. Does blade geometry play into that task? Yes, but I was very specifically focusing on edge retention with geometry aside, and the Spyderco S45 did the best. Um, so those are the type of tests that I have run with these knives. I found that Spyderco's S45 did incredibly well. And I've tested other S45VN, and generally speaking, in the production world, it does fairly well. Uh, if you're looking for an option that is kind of similar to MagnaCut, um, but you don't want to get like a Chris Reeve that's too expensive or a spider coat because they're ugly, right? Like if you, if you can't find well done MagnaCut because you don't like the price or the model, S45 is more readily available and you can find great knives in S45BN that perform fairly well. That's why it's in the lineup, okay? Um, let's talk about MagnaCut now, okay? Because um, a lot of people say it's hype. I have found when it's done either by Spyderco or Chris Reeve or a custom maker, it's actually fantastic and it's exact, exactly what it was predicted to be. It's a stain stainless stain resistant whatever you want to call it 4v that's what i have found from my testing okay um if it's done correctly so here we have the steadfast edc in magna cut this came in at a general 63.5 low balling so realistically 64 um but steve is very humble so we we are calling it 63.5 low ball okay um, this is from Steve Kalari at Kalari Custom Knives. This is his Steadfast model. It's a readily available model that he makes. However, he made mine beefy per my request. I wanted to really kind of be on this thing. So he actually kind of like doubled up on everything. This has a thicker um, blade stock. However, it does actually thin out a good amount. I believe it's uh, 11 or 12 thou behind the edge. Um, and he usually runs 5 thou. So beefier for him but in the grand scheme of things it thins out pretty pretty good um a little bit of a thicker tip on that because i wanted to poke and pry with it a little bit during my testing just all around a little beefed up compared to what he usually does but in the grand scheme of things still a really slicey knife this knife is one of my best performers out of my entire collection hands down and i have a lot of knives okay it's tied with my BGM knives, mini spade, full flat ground and magna cut. This one was 62.5 to 63. And this one I had a little bit of trouble with at first, but you know, I realized that the edge was convexed because that's how John did his ed edges. And once I got rid of the convex, it, it instantly turned into one of my best performing knives uh, in my collection. And I am talking about edge retention, okay? The toughness is still there, but edge retention, best performers. So this one is really nice as well. This is a wicked little slicer. Very cool knife. He does cryo on his. Um, but high hardness Magna Cut is still, um, in terms of the stainless world, king in my head. Now, like I said, I have an influx of steels coming in. We have 10V. We have S125V. We have Apex Ultra. I have people making numerous knives in ADC or V2 with their own heat treats that I'm going to test um, for fun. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming in right now. But for the time being, 
these two custom magna cut knives are the best performing knives in my collection in terms of stainless steel it's unbelievable what these knives can do and the toughness is literally just as good as the lower done magna cut that i've had before um i had the hogue deca in a lower um hardness and the toughness was really good on that knife and the toughness on these even though it's multiple points higher is still just as good there is no compromise there's no sacrifice these two knives are stupid tough stupid stupid tough <laughs> and i have a lot of testing on these on the channel this one right here we batoned with i understand that batoning is not a um abrasive test but i have had knives roll edges and chip out during batoning i i have so we batoned with it it was unscathed i i freaking love these two i freaking love these these are beautiful representations of magna cut done correctly aka high hardness okay let's go into the non-stainless world because you guys know i love the teeners you know i love high carbide tool steels carbon i love it mm. that almost gets me off as much as your mother it's really dang close so k390 is one that i've been shouting from the rooftops about for a long time and i just haven't found anything that beats it now i know we have s390 and k triple eight matrix coming out well the, the s390 is already out i i have no experience with that but we have k triple eight matrix coming out from switzerland or something like that like bowler bowler's making it what are they austria no i don't know bowler's making a, a new steel and it's been announced on instagram and um it's supposedly going to blow K390 out of the water. I have no idea how I'm going to get my hands on K K888 Matrix. K888 Matrix. Such a mouthful. I have no idea how I would get my hands on that. But I, if there's a will, there's a way. Um, but until I get it, K390 is still... Mm, it's so good, guys. Like, if you can get a freaking K390 knife, get it. Toughness, amazing. Edge retention, stupidly good teeners available it's freaking amazing you can and the crazy thing is you can strop this thing back over and over and over even off of the factory edge and it just comes back scary scary sharp i carried this for a whole month using it on cardboard every single day processing dog food cutting rope zip ties and literally i never had to sharpen it in the entire month of testing like i couldn't even finish the review because i only do my reviews if i can sharpen a knife um at least you know once or twice i don't think you can do a review unless you sharpen the knife but i carried it for a month and i still didn't have to sharpen it so i couldn't even do the full review on it this still has the factory flipping edge you can see it that's still the factory edge. All I've done is strop it back a couple times. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. Uh, so K390 is still king in my mind of one of my favorite steels. Maximit's up there too, but just because the toughness is so finicky with that knife, it K390 beats it for me. It just does. Um, Rex 45, another fantastic option. Now I will say... I've had better experience with um, thinly ground, like reground Rex 45. I've tested Rex 45 stock from Spider Co. in a an exclusive pair of three, and I just found that my regrind done by my buddy Anthony um, just does above and beyond better. It really does. This, I don't know all the info on this. I have the paper somewhere that he typed up saying the, the BT and all of the fancy stuff. Um, I, I don't know where that paper is. When I moved, it got put somewhere. But this is reground, okay? Actually, let's bring in a um, stock native file so we can kind of just show you guys the difference, okay? So this one's my Maximit. Look at that edge. That's freehand. How the hell? How the hell? freehand waste of time because Maximit doesn't do well with the polished edge which we found out I was doing some myth busting and it was true but that is a pretty freaking edge Whew. too bad it doesn't last as long toothiness wise okay stop showing off Erica you're a fool 
Okay. Just so you guys can kind of see there. Okay, so it really thins out by the tip, but it's just reground thinner in general, rounded spine and everything. Um, okay. Very cool. Very, very cool regrind. Um, Rex 45, if you have it thinned out, is another like super performer. It, in my opinion, sharpens better. It cuts longer. Um, it, you're not sacrificing any toughness again. Um, it kind of goes into my philosophy of do better. And too many companies are playing it safe. Spyderco is getting incredibly better at not playing it safe. I will say I'm very proud of Spyderco for pushing the limits with heat tree and geometry and stuff like that. They're doing incredible. Um, they're pushing themselves to be better. However, you know, a lot of companies just play it safe and they're not giving us the best they could for numerous reasons. But um, Thin Ground Rex 45 is amazing. If you have a knife in Rex 45 and you want it to do even better than it does, send it off for a regrind from, I don't know, Brian from Transparent Knives or John from BGM Knives. They do great regrinds. Um, absolutely incredible. And the only the, the only reason it falls a hair short for me from K390 is just because in my opinion again you almost have to thin it out a little more to get it to perform like K390 whereas K390 you just get it stock and it does that well from the get-go you don't have to touch it you don't have to regrind it it's just that good but Rex 45 unless it's really thin, it just doesn't do as well, in my opinion, from my testing as K390. Does that make any sense? So if you don't want to go through the, the effort of regrinding a knife, just get the K390, okay? This is all probably going to change, and I hope it does. I hope to contradict myself in six months to a year. I hope I do, because that's the whole point of the channel, is to learn and grow and test and debunk and prove. Um, but for right now, K390 for non-stainless, ma Magna Cut, high hardness for stainless. Those are my my most recommended steels. And then second place would be Rex 45, especially Reground, and S45. You can kind of get it from anyone, and it's generally fairly good, okay? Now that we got that part over with, let's just... <laughs> Let's just touch on something real quick because it, it relates to the topic. Yesterday, I don't know what was happening with the knife world, but three knives were released to the public in 1095 uh, carbon steel, ch chrome vanadium, what have you, okay? We had the Tops Shadow Hunter. 56 to 58 HRC. We also had a Spartan, uh, what's it called? Muck? Nemec? Something? It's a fixed blade, a, a Spartan fixed blade. 56 to 58 HRC. And then we had a K bar collab, something like that. It's like made in Taiwan, but designed in the US, folder 119 bucks. Uh, 56 to 59 HRC. Okay. The Spartan was $190, and the tops I didn't see a price on. Very ironic that those all got released in the same day when one of the biggest discussions in the community right now is companies giving us baby shit soft knives. 56 to 58 is probably the lowest HRC I have seen in a while, and I've seen some 55 type stuff. <clears throat> um, but 56 to 58 is unimaginable in an Erica's world. Don't even start with me on toughness, because we've already debunked that you can bring stuff up to a higher hardness 
uh, 60 maybe, 62, and you're not compromising toughness. You're just not. It's already been debunked, especially if you take a steel like 1095 Crovan that specifically had things added to it to make it tougher and with better edge retention at higher hardness. Okay? If you're adding, if you're adding chromium, vanadium, molybdenum, however the fuck you say it, and nickel, thank you, Steve, uh, to make it tougher at higher hardness, why are you still doing 56 to 58? What the heck? Oh my gosh, guys, it's mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, I just found it very ironic, I guess. I found it really interesting, and I just kind of wanted to add it in there because it just, it just supports my opinion that companies are not doing the best they can do. They're not innovative. They're not pushing themselves to do any better. They are staying stagnant. And the only thing that we can do as consumers is educate ourselves. It's not the market's job to educate us. Um, the only people that are going to educate us really are like custom makers. Like, yeah, maybe there are some production companies that will be transparent, but generally speaking, you're going to, you're going to find more honesty and education through, uh, custom makers. They're the ones that have the time to do lives and to do videos while they're making knives and kind of explain why they're pushing the envelope. Okay. Um, they just, and maybe they care more about us. Maybe. But a lot of production companies are not, they're too scared or too lazy to push the envelope and to give us just simply better knives. Generally speaking, unless you're doing something stupid, you are not sacrificing, sacrificing toughness. If you bump up the HRC a little bit, you're just not. It's not rocket science, okay? And I get it. Like, some people just like sharpened pry bars. Some people like a little tiny knife like this that is so stupidly overbuilt that you could pry open a car door and it probably won't break. And then if it does, it's under warranty anyway. Um, some people like that. You know, those knives are fun. But if we're talking about ultimate performance and edge retention, a lot of people could just simply do better and they're choosing not to. So that's why I have completely, generally speaking, stepped away from the production realm I will have some knives coming in that are production knives because I think they're relevant to prove my point. Like we have a um, we have a Magna Cut Bark River water moccasin coming in in, in Magna Cut. Like I said, um, there's a lot of controversy about that company's Magna Cut in particular, so I really wanted it to come in. But um, I think I think bringing a couple of those in here and there are relevant to just prove my point further that custom makers are doing it better higher hardness is better. Uh, so that's coming in. But like, basically what I'm saying is if you want a high performance knife with way better edge retention and still fabulous toughness, just invest your money in a custom maker. Support Steve from Steve Kalari Custom Knives. Super Steel Steve. Support John from BGM Knives. He's doing incredible work. Go support Kyle, the scrawny lumberjack. Go support Levi from Northern Knife Works, okay? Those are people that are pushing the envelope and they are looking at the competition and saying, I know I can give the people better. End of story. It's just how it is. Um, and those are the people I like to support. So this has been 28 minutes of a complete steel rant, nerd rant. I can't wait to see the comments because I know there are going to be people being like, no, ADCRV2 is the best. The ABS told me. Toughness. I know it's going to happen and I can't wait. Um, I love the conversation. I love it. And I love the education that you get through the comments. So as long as you are respectful, put it down in the comments below. If you are degrading, disrespectful, rude, or outright just vulgar, either YouTube will delete it or I will. Um, we're not going to be doing the name calling and the the over the top stuff. Like I want it to be a full blown, beautiful discussion down in the comments about this. And if you have an opposing opinion or opposing facts, please join in. I want to hear you contradict me. It just can't be 
degrading, okay? Um, so yeah, let's get it started, guys. I, I love it. I think it's such a good time right now. I think it's so exciting because there's so much con controversy going on and this is what we need, discussion to educate ourselves. So um, like I said, please go put in an order with Steve Kalari from Kalari Custom Knives. He makes high performance, incredible knives. You will not regret your purchase. Please go put in an order with John from BGM Knives, okay? two fabulous makers and the other ones are as well that I mentioned. I will see you guys on the next video. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. Look at that. <whistles> That'll score me some brownie points with mama. Uh, yeah, go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. I'll see you on the next video. I love you guys so much. Take care.